very awesome. cool. I like this better than the studio. It's more it organized. Right? Before you leave, you got to check it out. There's a wall over there that's got 1.1 million pennies on it that they did by hand. You know, he's really flailing. I'm sorry, but he was really worked up like on hand. So when I show up with my red, white, blue speedo posted up right behind Jeff Green's house in the public area, you won't mind? Not at all. Well, the bring your kids. How do you go on marijuana? Not Hope much. you're hungry. And today's spot is Riverside. We're, we're going to have a discussion with Jeff Green. He's a Democratic candidate for governor. He's from West Palm, and he is a multi-billionaire. And that's a billionaire with a B. So what better place than to come to kickbacks here in Riverside? Some 200 beers on tap, a thousand more you can order from, from the bottle, and a very eclectic menu fit for a billionaire and a 100 air. This is Open Tap. Uh, what, June 1st? Just about, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the other guys, you kind of knew they were in it. I mean, oh, yeah. Republicans, Democrats, either side of it, and, yeah. and you're in June 1. Some would say late to the game, but why get in it now? Well, I mean, I have been watching this race for a long time. Sure. And I can tell you, in the Democratic primary, basically, as of two months before the race, the leading candidate is undecided, because none of these candidates have inspired the electorate. And then they just haven't been able to catch on. And, you know, I, uh, I don't know if you know much about me. I mean, I... I've studied. Okay, I'm going to well, ask you a few questions about you, but well, sure. Well, I mean, but basically, like, just, to, just briefly, I mean, I grew up in Massachusetts, very middle class, very comfortable family. How do you say it? Worcester? Worcester. Worc well, there they say Worcester because they have Worcester. an accent, but I don't, I say, they say Worcester, you know, something like that. Okay. It's spelled like Worcestershire sauce. Right. So I grew up there. My dad had a, was a textile machinery deal. We used to, you know, I used to go with him. He'd go from mill to mill and sell big pieces of machinery as long as this whole restaurant. And we made, he made a great living. He had trucks, employees, and my mom stayed at home. In the late 60s, the mills all closed, just like that. Moved to the South, South Carolina, where, you, where you're from. Right. And, um, and uh, he never was able to, uh, so he moved to West Palm Beach, uh, tried different things, ended up uh, never getting on his feet. He got a vending route. And I used to go with him as a teenager and, you know, putting in Coke cans and one at a time in the vending machines. My mom had to take a job as a waitress at a big hotel. And I'd see them both come home exhausted late at night, I mean, from, uh, really physically hard work and I was thinking wow how did this happen to our family and it, it always made me you know put me in touch with how families fates can change and in Florida today a lot of families are struggling and I know that we, there are some really easy solutions that can that that uh, that can solve these problems and I I'm someone who's you know who's basically been been, get, been getting things done my whole life and I really want to get things done for the people of Florida what what specifically about Jacksonville do you think needs to be done? Well, I mean, look, Jacksonville is like everywhere in Florida. I think the number one issue, I mean, you have, look, St. John's County has the best school system in the state. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but why is that? You know, you've got parents who are writing big checks, you know, to help out in their schools. Every child in Florida deserves an equal education. I mean, I really believe that's the problem. Is and, and, you know, basically, you know, the problem in Florida is that we are not preparing our kids even from the very beginning. They're starting out way behind and they're staying behind. I mean, and you mentioned you have two kids. I two kids. I have three three boys, four, six, and eight. It, it made me put me very in touch with how important education is. And it's not just our kids, because all of Florida kids are our kids. Because you know what the interesting thing is, our kids are going to live with all the other kids. Our kids are going to, when they need surgery someday, will be getting surgery from these other kids. We need to make sure they're educated, or they may be shot by these other kids if they don't have opportunities. So all the children, all of Florida's children, are our kids. And my feeling is we need to get them a great education. And it starts with pre-K. And I can tell you, when I'm governor, we will have two years of pre-K, real pre-K, not what we're doing now, $2,400 a year per sure. child, but real pre-K for every three or four-year-old in Florida. So they get the beginning foundation of, of uh, education, of a great education that they will then continue on with for life. I'm going to take a look at the menu. Do you mind? Sure. I'm going to get lunch. OK, I'll do the same have thing. Have you had lunch? No, I haven't had I hope lunch. You're hungry. It's a long, it's a big menu. I had a little coffee across the street. And I, I, I know I got an email that you're on a, a bit of you know, health kick right now. Well, I'm always trying to heart. lose weight. I mean, you know, it's but that's 63 <laughs> years old. You know, when I was your age, you just had to cut out dessert. Now so I have to. I have to. Okay, so I googled you, and the Google spits out that you're worth 3.8 billion. Is that accurate? Is that an accurate you know, number? I mean, you know? who knows? I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't, one thing you, you know, I, I've been very, very lucky in life. I don't count my money, but I can tell you, I've had, I've been, I've been, I've, look, it's all because of two things. Number one, I went to public schools as a kid. Sure. Great public schools. Then when I went off to college, Lewis, I went to Johns Hopkins University, yeah. expensive, private, prestigious school, but I got, I had three jobs. 
I, when I went back to Palm Beach, West Palm Beach to see my parents, I worked as a busboy at the Breakers my whole vacation. I, but I also got stu national defense student loans, government student loans from the government. Mm -hmm. I also got a government funded work program where I checked IDs outside the gym 15 hours a week for right. a buck and a half an hour. The point is, I am exactly the person who, who got help from the safety net of a responsive, responsive government. I'm going to get a Duke's to drink What's, if I oh. could, which is a, a good Jacksonville beer. I don't know if you're beer well, drinker. Well, I'm just going to have an iced tea because I've got a bunch of... Sweet or unsweet? Un unsweetened, please. would be great. Like South Florida. you got a um, only kind a of A lemon is great. Thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> My name's Stephanie and I'll be taking care of you. Hello, Stephanie. I'm Jeff Green. I'm running for governor. I hope you vote for me if nice you're a Democrat you. in the primary. <laughs> there you go. I'll Always get running. Going Thank you very okay. much. No problem. Oh. Can't, I couldn't con you into getting a beer with me. You know, you I... got a long day? Yeah, I, I, I don't drink much, to be honest with you right? all. I really yeah. don't, actually. I yeah. mean, I, I, I really don't drink hardly at all. I've, I'll, don't I'll, let me peer I'll, pressure you for having some. No, I'll have a glass of wine. I have wine, wine with dinner like once, once or twice a week, but that's really it. I'm not a drinker. Uh, I am going to ask, I mean, I don't, how often do I get the opportunity to sit next to a billionaire? So let me ask you that. <laughs> so at 35, where were you? 35. What were you doing? I'm not going to ask your worth at 35, but like at that age, oh, and you're like, what fate, what phase of okay. success were you in? 35, I was just, I was, I was, had been living in California. I had just a fantastic run up in my career, everything from my struggling, and I probably had a net worth of $35 million. Wow. And I had a big portfolio of real estate. And let me tell you something, I was just about to head into one of the worst crashes in history. Sure. And my entire, two years later, when I was 37, my entire net worth was wiped out on paper from the crash of 91, the SNL crisis. Yep. And then I had to, well, and it was a valuable lesson. I mean, this is one thing about me as a candidate that differentiates me, differentiates me from the other candidates. I am 63 years old. I saw my whole net worth evaporate. I've made mistakes. You know, you learn a lot by the, between 35 and 63. And it, I think it equips me very well to, to run the state like Florida, which is gonna take some very, you know, someone who's made mistakes, who knows how to get from point A to point B, and, and, and understands complex issues and how to solve them. Donald Trump, immediate reaction when I say that name. Horrible human being. <laughs> and that's going to lead us to the next question. Okay. So uh, as soon as the drinks get here, I think I'm going to need a sip of something uh, before we get into that. Thank you so much. You're and for the whole crew, too. I love it. <laughs> See, and I do do it very occasion, but I, but I know. I hear not, you. Hey, listen, it's not the middle of your day. I'll get thing, interviews all day. I've got to talk to a bunch of TV stations I, and stuff. I work, I, uh, I do the morning show at First Coast right. News. I go in at 2 a.m. Oh, you know, really? So th oh, yeah, okay. I'm awake at 2 a.m., so this is my 5 o'clock. Oh, okay, okay. Well, well, cheers to you, anyhow. Well, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Nice God to bless. meet you, Thank Yes, you. sir. Now I'm going to have the Greek salad light on the dressing. What kind of dressing would you like? Oh, what do you usually serve on it? Italian balsamic vinaigrette, ranch. Everybody oh, yeah, changes it. A little, a little balsamic vinaigrette, balsamic light, and um, the large size. It's my lunch. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. No problem. I'm gonna do the spaghettios. Spaghettios, meatballs yeah. or no meatballs? Uh, we'll do meatballs, <laughs> protein. Oh. That's how I used to eat when I was 35. See, right? Now I'm having iced tea and salad. That's I right. See, so so hopefully you have better genes than me. <laughs> <laughs> Here, well, I don't know. It looks like hey, genes are working for you. I could you. lose so many, but you know. I think we all could. Um, so there's an ad uh, that's running that shows you actually in Mar-a-Lago, the dining room with Trump, and you say you're, the line is that uh, you're the one that stood up to Trump. You can't hear what y'all are talking about. I am fascinated what that conversation was. I can see y'all are gesturing, you're saying something back and forth. What were you standing up to him about that well, night? First of all, it wasn't Mar-a-Lago. It, was no, it, it was at his golf club in West golf Palm Beach. Gotcha. And I had been invited by a friend to a birthday dinner, okay. which, you know, I'm not going to turn down even though it's at his club. Yeah. And uh, so I went there and I was sitting at my table and it's a buffet. So I had to walk over to get the buffet. Even though he was president-elect, you still walk right by his table. And um, he basically, I was just walking by, and he stood up and uh, he pointed at me, and he said, "Jeff Green." And he was talking not to me; he was talking to Kellyanne Conway, Rance Priebus, his wife Melania, his son, and others at the table. Who you probably could see in the commercial, in the in the video. Yeah. And um, he screamed at me, "Jeff Green, Jeff Green." He spent millions of dollars on commercials against me, trying to get me to lose. He tried to do everything he could for Hillary to win. He wouldn't even be, and he was like flailing his arms, all turning red. And uh, 
you know, so of course I told him, I said, look, I'm a, I'm a Democrat, you know, I'm not a supporter, of course I want to support Hillary. And I, you know, I went back at him, well, Ben, I don't think he really appreciated it. He, right. you know, he had just been elected president. Most people are kind of, you know, worshiping him. And I was standing up, and my wife was sitting at our table two away. Mm -hmm. And this went on for quite some time. So, you know, he was really flailing. I mean, he was really worked up, like unhinged. So this is a, something I'm going to do with that. This isn't just you, but every single Democrat that I'm, I'm speaking sure. with, and I think everybody has pretty much agreed to be on the show with me. Um, Donald Trump, tell me something you like about the man. Can you give me something positive about Donald Trump? Well, uh, you know, honestly, he's, he's always, prior to that, other than this conversation, so whenever I've seen him, he was always personable. You know, I mean, as far as, you know, he's a good host. You know, he knows sure. how to, like... You know, to, he knows how to pat people on the back. You see it in, even the way he can do that, and that's 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 a skill he has. But it kind of starts and ends there, unfortunately. And okay. you know, the nice of these, you know, Lewis, you're the best reporter I ever talked to. I mean, yeah. that that's great. But at some point, you know, there's, there should be some more substance. And I <laughs> I saw that when I first met him years ago, and I was thinking like, where's the substance here? Where, like, where's the meat? But you do have a unique of any of the candidates a unique relationship with the president. I mean, in fact, that you're, you're, <laughs> you're neighbors, yeah, I mean, yeah, frankly, yeah. And, and you've had these more or less run-ins with the guy. Um, and that does that make you uniquely qualified as an executive of one of the 50 states? I mean, well, I, I look, I think that when I'm look, what I'm going to do up in Florida is I'm going to change education for yet for in, change education at every level in Florida, sure. whether it's pre early education, K-12, community colleges, universities, that is going to be our focus. That's going to lead to higher wages. That's going to lead to prison, to prison, less prisoners, criminal justice reform. I mean, that's what that's what's important. But will I, am I uniquely qualified? Have I stood up to this guy before? Will I stand up to him again? Absolutely. He tries to put Floridians in cages and pull, pull kids away from their mothers. Of course I'll stand up to him on that. When's the last time you had SpaghettiOs? Uh, when I was, uh, I think, in the third grade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, with the meatballs, too. They look good. Mm -hmm. They look good. Oh, I'm telling you. Try, mm -hmm. to less, try to eat less gluten. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm driving uh, the gluten-free hey, craze. You don't have to worry about that, you know, so. I do have to worry about My it. My wife's here. She'll, she'll, she'll kill me if I get spaghetti. she <laughs> yell at me. <laughs> well, the spaghettios, too. Little Chef Boyardee never did anybody wrong. See, after this, I'm going to go swim for two hours. You know what I mean? Oh, get, the, get, in the, get in the pool. So hopefully, okay. hopefully this doesn't impact me too bad. I haven't had spaghettios. Let's try it. Well, I don't have a fork, so I'm gonna wait. Oh my god! How rude! <laughs> but I am gonna tell you, this tastes exactly like I remember in third grade. Yeah, good. We'll get off. Uh, they bring a fork. So on the back of the menu, and it's really for late night. You know, 3 a.m. Because this place is open 20 hours a day. Uh -huh. So it's late night. Have people had a lot of drinks? You know what I mean? It's uh -huh. like they I get see. to craving spaghettios, or they yeah, get to craving want, ramen right. noodles, or peanut butter and jelly. Exactly. No, so, no, 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 no dry salads at three oh, in the morning. Thank you. No dry salads no, at midnight. No, yeah. no, no, no. The, grease, that, the greasier, the better, right? The greasier, hold you over, get you to the house, oh, stumble it. home. I get you know it. what I mean? Um, I don't really remember those days, but you know, no? I, I can sort of try to. Sort of maybe. <laughs> were there party? Were there parties in your day? Oh, well, look, I was single. I met my wife later in life, so I mean, I, not too much. I mean. I was always a very focused kid. I mean, to, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I've always worked very hard, but you know, sure. when I was single, I mean, I certainly, you know, like, like most single people, I, you know, went out like sure. late at night and stuff, you know, I was, was in that bar at midnight ordering sure. some French fries or something, yeah. you know, I chicken Googled, wings. I did Google the dirt, you know, to see if there no. were any party days, any scandal or anything like that. So any scandals I need to know about? Nah. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> no just, we'll leave it at that then. I, I, but but, but the, the thing is like, I Googled you and, um, you know, I'm looking at the top five things that came out about you, and I, we got to find your search engine optimization, because I, your website was like on the second page of Google, so we got to get that up to the top, because I'm trying to find your, your policy, your my issues. My team, my team's working on it. we got to get that team, yeah, because I'm trying to find, so that's the big question. When somebody needs to know about Jeff Green, and they're looking for you, um, I found a Forbes article from 2015, oh, that's a good picture. Of yeah. you guys uh, telling me some of the things I need to know about you. It talks about your yacht. It talks about the property you well, own. Well, I don't have a yacht. I, I used to have a yacht. No more yacht? No, and I sold, we sold that years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. She's gone. Okay, see, that's how old the article was. So what are the things that people need to know about? We've talked about education. You want to do three and four VPK. Um, 
you already have the four VPK, but three would be uh, well, an expansion. Well, I don't agree. No, what we don't. No, we no? don't have four. No, we don't have four. No, we don't. Four. Well, my son just got out of four VPK. Well, maybe you know, maybe he's in a good one. But I can tell you, for the most most kids in Florida are not getting the education. Uh -huh. You can't get kids educated in the at four years old even for the kind of education they need to prepare for kindergarten. Have the and you know you have to stay at, 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 on, for twenty four hundred dollars a year. It's sure. just not it's, that that goes without saying. We all know what it costs, uh -huh. and what they're, they're high, you know the requirement is that some of the typically people make these these, these uh, teachers make ten dollars an hour. They uh, have to be 16 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, it's not the kind of education our kids need. I mean, this what we need to do is we need to have comprehensive pre-K education for three and four-year-olds. Because you know the problem is not your kids or my kids necessarily, but there are kids who come and live in a household where mom is working three jobs. She comes home exhausted at night. There's no dad, and who's reading to the child? Nobody. Look, it's great for St. John's County. I'm glad they have great schools. Every school should be like that. And you know what? It shouldn't be that. The way Warren Buffett describes it, he talks about the ovarian lottery. He says some kids, you know, win it, some kids lose it. And if you're born in a zip code with underfunded schools, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't ruin your life. Then let's talk about it. How do you get the money? Uh, you know, there's some say raise a corporate tax or a state income tax. Where, uh, with Jeff Green, where's the money going to come well, from? Well, Louis, that's an easy, an easy answer. You know, I've, it happens to be, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time on this, and I can tell you that there's a, there's a statistic called percentage of gross state products spent in education, okay? In the state of Florida, guess where we are in the country? 38. Right. So you know what? This isn't a priority for Florida. We did, these 20 years of Republican governors have not, it hasn't been a priority to spend money on our children. And so we now, we're, we're 38, we're the third largest state, we're playing 38th in the country in education. So what are we going to do? We're going to move that number up and spend more on education, less on some of these corporate welfare programs, less money. Look how much money we spend to send to these schools without rules. These charter schools, private schools. You know, the public school budgets are already, you know, frighteningly low. We can't be stripping them out to give it away to, to, to experimental for-profit charter schools. So we're going to end that, and we're going to move it up the priority list. So we're going to spend a larger percentage of our money on our children and education. We don't have to raise any taxes. Uh, Ann did ask on Facebook, want to uh, reference to our sweet, uh, dear Ann, uh, tell me your, your biggest Florida wildlife story, because we always have stories of gators showing up on front doors and swimming pools. Have you ever have you ever had a run-in with a 13-foot gator, a crocodile in the uh, in the, the swamp? You, it, what's what's Jeff Green come across? Well, actually, yes. One time, my wife and I were uh, at a, a ranch in the middle of the state, okay. a bluehead ranch, big, big ranch. We went out there, and uh, we were wandering around, and someone saw, you know, there could be, uh, be, you know, there could be snakes, alligators. And, you know, sure enough, we were walking along, yeah. and... Uh, and there were three alligators. Three all, big alligators. They, they, well, no, it was, it was like, I think there were two babies. Maybe it was a parent, which even worse, because they're probably protecting yeah. the babies. Absolutely. And they were crawling up out of the uh, out of this little kind of stream. And, you know, we just kind of kept moving and nothing happened. But yeah, I, I wasn't frightened, but I'd say it was definitely uh, something I wasn't prepared for. It was almost, it was, it was the second I said, I, we, we said, are there any alligators here? I said, no, nah, you, you, there are, but you never see them. Right there, you know? <laughs> Immediately, it was it was like with it was like oh, it was on cue, you know. It was like they heard us saying that. Jeff Green, Florida man. <laughs> I tell you, the Florida man. All right, how do you feel about marijuana? No. Recreational marijuana. Um, Legalize it? No. Decriminalize it immediately. Okay. Am I talking to Facebook? Am I talking to you? Talking to Facebook. This okay. is Myra. Perfect. Myra. Hi, Myra. Yep. We definitely need to decriminalize it. There's no reason that some kid who gets you know caught with a small amount of marijuana has to have his life ruined to be a felon and you know, go to prison. I mean, that makes no sense. But I think we've realized that the that the, the does the, the, the crime doesn't fit the punishment. And as far as full legalization, here's my nuanced view. It's a little different than the other candidates. Right. And maybe you'll feel the same way with two young kids. So I always think, and I have an eight-year-old son, and I think to myself, okay, what if he's you know five years from now, he's going over to his friend's house, and there's a pack of marijuana cigarettes on the table that belong to the kid's dad or older brother. And all of a sudden, he picks one up and starts smoking marijuana. Right. You could say liquor's around. I get it. But you don't need to put more things around. So I would say, you know, the good news is I always learn from other, other examples. The good news is it's already been legalized in Colorado now for, I think, a number of years. You know, Washington, Oregon, soon yeah. California, I think, Massachusetts. So let's take a look at those places. And let's see, has consumption increased among people, young people? 
If it has, we got a problem. If you're seeing kids under 18 are smoking marijuana or using it 30, 40 percent more, I'd say then, hey, let's we got to keep it illegal and just not decriminalize it. If, on the other hand, consumption hasn't increased at all, then I'd say legalize it, regulate it, tax it. Done. End of story. Uh, you know, you know, look, oh, I, I'm, I'm, no, that's okay. I don't want to. I don't want to start. Well, we're here to talk, you know. Yeah. So, absolutely. But while you're eating, while I'm eating, down to earth stuff. Where's your favorite place to vacation in Florida? No. The truth of the matter is, we live in Palm Beach. Right. We love it there. Uh, we're right on the ocean. Yeah. You know, we have a great beaches there. We have so many wonderful, um, you know, just uh, envir ec excellent things to do. We don't leave home much. Stay in the house. Have a nice day. We stay home all the time. You know, we, we, we <coughs> you know, look, we have, every family loves to, you know, have a chance to take your kids up to Legoland and Disney World. And we've done that. But generally, you know, I think, uh, you know, we find that we, we're, Palm Beach County is a wonderful place. Yeah. You live on the beach. Uh, so you can relate to, I mean, this, this law that just passed, just went into effect now that homeowners can fence off parts of their beach up to the high water mark now in Florida. You can have your own private little beach area. Um, for or against that? Now, look, I think the beaches have to be open to the population. That's one of the big problems we have in Palm Beach. There just isn't enough public beach sure. for the people in West Palm Beach. And I, I'm a, you know, I've become a big investor in West Palm Beach, and I've built a lot of housing and other, other things there, other properties. And I can tell you that I, when I talk to the city of I say one of our problems, we don't have access to enough beaches. We, you know, with the, the beach in Palm Beach, is, I think they have a two-hour parking limit, and right. it's a very limited amount of space. So we have to do everything to can, can to protect beaches for you know, residents, tourists. I mean, the, be, the beaches are our, our state gem. Yeah. So when I show up with my red, white, and blue Speedo posted up right behind Jeff Green's house in the public area, you won't mind? Not at all. You wave the flag. Bring your kids. Bring okay. your kids. <laughs> okay. Enjoy. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And if an open tab checks on me this time, the next time, I'll well, next time, come down to Palm Beach, yeah. and we'll, we'll take you out. Can't wait. Be great. Thank you. Cheers.